CIT 225, Network Security and Penetration Testing. This is chapter number seven, spoofing. Now the objectives are to understand the mechanics of spoofing, describe the consequences of spoofing, define various types of spoofing, and list and describe some spoofing tools. Learn how to defend yourself against spoofing. That's what I told you, that spoofing is not only IP spoofing. There are different modes of it. Now, spoofing is a sophisticated way to authenticate one machine to another by using forged packets, as I showed you on the board. Now, misrepresenting the sender of a message to cause the human receipt to behave a certain way. Two critical issues of internet network systems is trust and authentication. Because once a sender is sending information through a router to a receiver, you'll have to trust the communication which takes place between the sender and receiver. And then once it's authenticated using a SYN act, because a SYN is sent from the sender to the receiver, receiver sends SYN act that, okay, I acknowledge that I'm alive, the trust relationship is built in between them, and then they start communicating the packets. Authentication is less critical when there is more trust. I trust you, so the communication is authenticated. A computer can be authenticated by its IP address, host name, or MAC address. Because all this information is usually kept where? Inside the RIP router. Because the information was constantly flowing of the host, IP, and the MAC address, so it would say that, okay, I trust this information, no need to check, let's pass it on. Now TCP IP has basic flaw that allows IP spoofing. Trust and authentication have an inverse relationship. Not always possible that it would be going to the same receiver if a sender is sending something. Initial authentication is based on the source address interest relationship. So if the source address is same and it's sending the packets back, it trusts the other computer and a relationship takes place. Most fields in the TCP header can be changed or forged because we are collecting the information about the packets which are flowing using the Wireshark. Then we have the sequence number. Then we have the sender, receiver, IP addresses, MAC addresses then you craft your own packets using the same information and how it's growing. Now, if you'll constantly send some packets and you are capturing the packets on Wireshark, you can see how the sequence number is, in, is increasing. So once you note down the actual sequence number and how it's increasing, you can craft your own packet and send it in order to spoof it. A successful attack requires more than simple forging a single header. You'll have to collect more information on that. Requires sustained dialogue between the machines for minimum of three packets. So you'll start the packet capture and then collect all the relevant information which is required. IP takes care of the transport between machine, but the IP is unreliable. Why is it unreliable? Because if a communication is taking place between two computers. A computer has an IP address starting with 10.16.1.28. Now that computer is connected to the network and you are somewhere on the network where you know where is the cable going for that PC. As I showed you in the data center, that all network sockets that you have in any organization it has a number on it. Now that tells us that exactly where is this port terminating as on the uh, termination box here or as well, we're showing a number. Now we know that where is it terminating. If I'll enter the room where they have the switch installed, I'll disconnect his cable, I'll connect my cable, and I'll give the same IP address of that computer so now that PC is disconnected, but my PC is on with the same IP address. So that's why they are saying that 
TCP uses, TCP is more reliable and has features of checking and receiving. IP takes care of the transport between, but IP is unreliable. One computer can have one IP by DHCP, maybe some other computer would have the same IP. The PC would change, IP would remain the same. Because there is a time uh, which is assigned to each IP address on a computer, if that computer is offline, DHCP can issue the same IP address to any other computer. Now TCP is more reliable and has features for checking and receiving the packets. TCC, TCP has an indexing system to keep track of the packets and put them in the right order. Like if you are receiving packet number 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, once it's communicated to the receiver, it should be sent in the same sequence as 1, 2, 3, 4. Once it's received in the same sequence, there is no modification in the header of it. It would compile it and the information would be conveyed. If it's reversed or there is a change in the header or the sequence of the packets received, it would discard the packet and it would ask it to send it again. To spoof a trusted machine relationship, the attacker must identify the target pair of trusted machines, the two machines which were talking to each other and they had a relationship by getting the information on routing information protocol that they are both communicating the, to each other, identify the target pair, anesthetize the host the attacker intends to impersonate. It would tell the host that actually that computer does not exist. I am the new router, so transfer all that information to me. For the address of the host the attacker is pretending to be. so. You will change the address of the host that the attacker is, uh, I am the sender now, not the actual attack, and uh, not the actual sender who is sending all that information. Connect the target to the assumed identity and accurately guess the correct sequence. Now, nowadays it is not guessing. When we are using Wireshark, it tells us exactly what is the sequence number. When they are saying guess the correct sequence, Sequence is the sequence number of communication, how it's communicating between the sender and receiver. If you are capturing packets between two computers, specifically, you can get all details of communications between those two machines on a network using Wireshark. And then you can read the sequence number and all those packet sizes, etc. You can use any network protocol analyzer to monitor your LAN. You can anesthetize or stun the host that you want to impersonate. By performing sin flood or sin attack, ping of death or denial of service, as I showed you in the drawing, that it would flood the other machine with sending so much sin packets that it won't be able to resolve the other party that whether it exists or not. It would keep on sending the packets for the IP addresses which does not exist. And your receiver would be busy finding that where to send the packets or what to do about that. Forging the address of the stunned host could be done with the same utility used to stun the trusted machine. Now there are lots of tools with the help of which you can do that. They use Kali Linux, sometimes they use Windows based tools, sometimes they use specially crafted scripts to perform these kind of operations. Big problem is guessing something close to the correct incremented victim site sequence number. ISN are not random, so the guess is not a random. When they are capturing the packets, they are capturing the sequence number and sequence number is incremental. So if it was 3001, it would be 3002, then 3003, 3004, and so on. So they know that exactly at what sequence number these two computers are communicating with each other. Sequence numbers start at 1 when the machine is booted up and incremented by a fixed value. Once the hacker has the trust, um, uh, has put the trusted machine to sleep with sin attack, sends a SYN packet to the victim machine. 
so you'll have to make the machine seems like it's not available by sending SYN packets to it. Hackers should connect to the victim machine several times on port 23 or 25. Remember when we were checking the tools for um, scanning the ports, it was showing us exactly which port is listening. Now they found out that port 23 and 25 is open, so those two compu those computers which has the port 23 and 25 active, they are the prime targets. So they'll find those computers and then they'll launch attacks on it to get an idea of how quickly the sequence number advances. Attacker also need to deduce the packets round trip, which is the, uh, uh, the time which it takes to go to the sender and back to the receiver. When the, uh, when the attack is done, the trusted machine must be released and returned to the normal. Now, what are the normal costs or the drawbacks or the damages of spoofing? Costs the victims of successful spoofing attacks are tied to an amount of information that was copied and the sensitivity of the data. Depends what kind of machine was it and what kind of transactions were taking place on it. For example, if it was a server which was collecting all the information about the credit cards and the payments which are being made on a specific server, it would collect all possible details of the transactions. Successful tangible and intangible losses. Successful spoof attacker usually leaves back door to get back in later. So if he has compromised on a computer, it would keep a back door open so that if he wants to come and to capture the information again on the same computer, he'll be able to do that. Economic losses may occur when valuable data is lost or duplicated. Stealthy nature of the successful spoofing attack, company might not know what happens or when, since when they were collecting the information. But in next generation firewalls, it is easily identified that since when it was happening and uh, what was the attacker, what was the IP address, what was the MAC address and all those relevant details. Strategic losses, loss of strategic data that outlines events planned for the future. So if it's a competitor keeping an eye on the other party that what is going to take place, what uh, new plans they are coming up or the promotional details and all that information, it could, it could be copied from there. Could lead to loss of both money and goodwill for the spoofed company because the product that they were going to launch in a week was launched by the competitor before the actual launch of the product. General data loss usually has less of an impact than the first two categories of losses, comes from unsecured document used by the employees working on various projects engaged to day-to-day -day business needs. Now, main categories of spoofing includes blind spoofing, active spoofing, IP spoofing, ARP spoofing, web spoofing, or DNS spoofing. So spoofing is a general term. It depends what kind of thing are you trying to attack on. It could be IP, it could be ARP, or we call it uh, router uh, RIP as well, routing uh, information protocol or routing internet protocol. Web spoofing, which is talking about the information which is being sent through the internet and DNS using the DNS leak or DNS poisoning. Now, blind spoofing is any kind of spoofing, if spoofing where only one side of the relationship under attack is in view. Hacker is not aware of all network conditions, but uses various means to gain access to the network. Like they are trying to communicate the packets which are sent through a network, either by a wired network or through a wireless communication. Active spoof spoofing is when a hacker can see both parties observe the responses from the target computer and respond accordingly. All the packets which were flowing between a computer A to computer B on a network, it would capture all traffic using promiscuous mode. 
Hacker can perform various exploits such as sniff the data, corrupting the data, and changing the contents of the packets, even deleting some packets, so that complete information is not being sent to the other party. IP spoofing consists of the hacker accessing a target disguises as a trusted party can perform by hacker through either a blind or an active method of spoofing.